Hi, everyone. Welcome to our latest quarterly update. I'm joined once again by our global CIO multi-asset, Greg Heert, who will take a look back, look forward, and discuss portfolio positioning. Hi, Greg. Hi, Peter. Thanks for having me here again. You're welcome. First, what have been the main developments over the last quarter? Well, since the end of July, global equities have consolidated as better-than-expected economic data dashed hopes that the monetary tightening cycle is coming to an end. Indeed, Despite receding inflationary pressures, many central banks in developed economies have remained relatively hawkish due to the stickiness of core inflation numbers. While both the Fed and Bank of England declined to hike rates again in mid-September, another round is not excluded before year-end. Critically, there was some indication that cuts in 2024 may come later than previously expected. In China, investors were again disappointed by the authorities' muted reaction to tackling the ongoing weakness of the domestic economy, especially in the real estate sector. Coupled with the strengthening of the US dollar, we have therefore some emerging market equities underperforming developing markets. Turning to bonds, the situation has been mixed. US bonds have sold off, with 10-year yields reaching their highest levels for almost 16 years on solid economic data and Fed speculation. Alongside this, the U.S. raised its debt issuance target for the coming quarter, leading to further pressure on long-dated yields. In contrast, European bonds have eked out some small gains as the economic outlook worsens by the day, while overall, high-yield bonds continue to outperform investment-grade debt. Thanks, Greg. And could you give us some idea what you expect over the coming quarter? Well, overall, we expect the coming months to bring a mixed growth outlook and normalization of headline inflation. However, there will be divergences across regions and asset classes. For instance, there is now a growing consensus that we will see a soft landing in the US reflected in significant rise in consensus GDP forecasts. This contrasts with Europe where the outlook is increasingly downbeat and sentiment is slumping to recessionary levels. And despite inflationary pressures beginning to recede, it now seems that rights are likely to remain higher for longer than some had expected as indicated also at the recent Fed meeting in mid-September. In this regard, one should carefully observe the future development of the oil price as it could influence on market expectation of inflation. In Asia, much depends on how the Chinese authorities act to support key sectors and manage the transition away from debt-driven economy, especially on the property side, to one led by innovation areas such as renewables and electric vehicles. Of course, Reshaping the economy in this way is medium term, at best. Yet, we wait to see what supportive actions will be taken in the near future. Thanks, Greg. And given these developments, could you give us your views on portfolio positioning? Well, due to persistent positive momentum and technical factors, we maintain a moderately constructive position in equity markets. One particularly bright area is Japan, where resilient earnings and macro data accompanied by a supportive monetary policy means the upward trend remains intact. However, our medium-term fundamental outlook remains mixed at best. On the one hand, investors expect productivity boosts due to AI and other tech advances, but this is tempered by the possibility of interest rates remaining higher for longer. Our economic indicators clearly indicate a high recessionary risk in the coming quarters. Looking at fixed income, Momentum is nudging us toward a slightly cautious approach, yet the risk of weakening of the global economy, valuations, and appealing normal N real yields, that means that we are more optimistic here than the market. In this context, Europe is looking particularly enticing at the moment. Turning to commodities, the weak yuan and lack of stimulus in China is translating to weakened demand in some areas, such as copper. However, support from industries involved in the green transition and low inventories also are having a countering effect. With respect to oil, we remain somewhat constructive due to production cuts in Russia and Saudi Arabia. Gold historically correlates inversely with real yield. As the later is exhibiting quite high levels, we are quite confident that there is future upside potential for the yellow metal, especially as central banks continue to grow their stocks. Looking at currencies, we can really see that the US dollar has been supported by macro data. But we also see, on the other hand, that massive overvaluation limits any large appreciation at this level. Thanks, Greg, for your thoughts today. Insightful as ever, and we look forward to seeing you again in the new year.
Well, also from my side, thanks a lot and see you next year. Thanks for joining us.